already five minutes over. <laughs> five minutes over already. I thought. It's okay. This light is okay? Okay. See? No? Okay, don't give it because it's touching my ear directly. <coughs> so today probably we'll have our this this Upanishad will be ending. Okay, let us start the chant. Om Shahana Bhavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Paravahai Te Dashvi Nabadhi Tamastu Mavid Visha Bahai Om Shanti 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 Parihi Om Tatsat Om may Brahman protect us both, the teacher and the student equally. May he enable us to share the benefit of the learning equally. May we be equally strong to grasp the meaning of the learning. May the learning be equally fruitful to us. May we never be jealous of each other. Peace, peace, peace be unto us all. So we are the last phase of this book and we got the message. We can say that we have got the message, the cream of the teaching of this Kata Upanishad. What is that? <coughs> that we have to re attain liberation here and now in this life. Not to wait for after death some experience in heaven which is uncertain. Who knows whether there is that will happen or not. So it has been emphasized that it should happen here and now and when it will happen? Now when all the desires of the heart is just severed or gone from the heart. There is no desire for any little things of the world. And the mind then becomes free from all entanglement. And then that realization that uh, of Marto, the mortal, will be immortal. So that was the verse on page 177 where we read that when a person, sarve pramuchyante, when all the get out of that, everyone, pramuchyante kama, all the kama, means kamana, the desire, the expectation for the world and worldly things, which is nothing bad. It is bad in the sense because it does not bring us eternal joy. When our attraction for that is totally gone, on page 177, then Marto, the mortal, this, this mortal person who is subject to birth and death, who is subject to cry and weep, who is subject to misery and pain, that person will be free from Amrito Bhavati becomes immortal, becomes undying. Not that this body will be gone. Normally we have idea. Whenever we talk about that, we feel the undying means there will be something. The body will remain. I will remain in this way. That is not the intention of the Upanishad. Upanishad teaches that your eternal self, you will be remaining in your eternal self. Body is a mortal thing, body comes and body goes. Body is created by the five elements and body is also created, it, it is destroyed by the, goes back to the five elements when one dies. 
So the question is that coming and going as happens to the body and mind is also a body in a subtler level we call the subtle body and ego is also a body which is called the causal body. So we have three bodies. When one gets out of these three bodies, identification of these three bodies and the enjoyment or experience what these bodies can give me. Now in the waking state, through my senses, it gives me experience of the external object of form, beauty, pleasure, pain, all these things experiences through the five senses. And when you go to dream, that dream experience also gives us that soul who is residing, having some fun, joy, suffering, pain, all this same similar thing. It is now we think it is dream, but that when we are in the dream situation, we know they are the only reality. So they are also experience. And when you go to sleep, that time mind being inactive, we don't see anything, experience any physical thing, but we feel the bliss or joy, peace out of deep sleep. So these are the three experiences. And again we come back to the three states of our moving from waking state to dream state to sleep state to waking state. It is a rotation of this is called our life. But when, why we are doing this? Because we have some expectation. Because we need something to fulfill myself. As I am hungry, I need food. When my eyes are hungry to see some beauty, we go for different places of beauty to visit this country, that country. When my ear is hungry, then you go for listening to classical music or this music, that music. So every sense organ has its corresponding subject. And when one is hungry for that, we get run for those things. And when we run for those things, immediately it gives us a glimpse of little touch of joy. And then that remains in my memory. And that forces me to go for second time and go for third time, fourth time, and going all, all the time going like that, a point comes when you feel that, oh, I have done so many times. Let me try something new. So we again get attached from one thing to the other thing. Maybe we get detached from one thing, but we get attached to the other thing. So this is the way of our life going. So this is a bondage because it is taking our freedom away from our own way of living in our own consciousness, no? It is forcing me to travel in the realm of this journey of this little pleasure, little suffering, sometimes more suffering, little touch of joy. And even sometimes people feel days and days there is no joy in life. It's all suffering. I'm go going to a, to a bad time. I said, trouble time, no? So why this trouble time? Why? Oh, this person is bad, that person is doing like that. That may be excuse. But Upanishad does not get satisfied by putting the blame on someone else, which we are very comfortable with. It does not solve the problem, but we are at least comfortable. I am not the, I am good person. Problem is with you. So I can escape. But no, it does not release you from your inner bondage. So, this Upanishad teaches, Gita teaches, that it is our clingingness to things. Wherever my clingingness, there I get bound. And that bondage does not allow me to live freely in my own dignity, in my own real nature. So, the Upanishad said that Yada Sarve Pramuchyante, at that point when everyone gets freed from all kama. It's a plural. Kama, kamo, kama. Desire, one desire, single desire, kama. Kamo, two desires, kama. Plural. Infinite number of desires. So desire after desire, the desire. And we are always running to fulfill those desires. And that is where, where is seated? It is seated here in your, in my heart. 
I want to see it, I want to hear that, I want to enjoy this, I want to go here, I want to go there. It's coming in the heart or your emotion or your mind. So it says, Kama Yosofidisthita Shrita, which is settled here in the heart. When that Kama, these desires, are pramuchyante, when one can get out of it, or when they are all lost or destroyed, why? How can you destroy? How can I leave then? The question. No, you can leave. You can leave the world because Upanishad says there is the self everywhere. There is the bliss everywhere. Why do you get attached to the name and form? You, our problem is getting attached to the name and form. We don't get attached to the name and form. Whose name and whose form? Who is behind this name and form? That is the Atman. So, that is why we can enjoy the world more if we can love that substratum of all our existence. That is the Atman. That is called consciousness. That is called joy. That is called blessedness. So, <coughs> Marto at that point of development of the soul, when the desires are being cut asunder or destroyed, Marto Omrito Bhavati, they become immortal and then they attain to Brahma Samasmute, they attain to the state of Brahmanhood, feeling that I am eternal, I am birthless, I am deathless. It will come spontaneously. Hmm? Again, they have emphasized that same idea in the 15th verse on page 178. Yada Sarvi Pravidhyante Hridayasayohagranthaya All the knots of the heart. Hridaya. Again, all our desires, all our anxieties, worries, feeling, emotion center is the heart. So, in, from that heart, all the ties and knots, when it is all cut asunder, then Marto, this mortal person who is subject to birth, death, disease, suffering, and decay, death, and death, that person becomes Amrito Bhavati, becomes immortal. And Bhavati, Etavad, He Anushasanam. This much is the advice. Advice of the sages. Ends here. He say, this is the end of all lessons and teachings. That the knot, the bond, the bondage which we have created in our mind, and bondage created with what? With the temporary, changeful objects of the universe. When that is cut asunder, what will remain? Then, Martha, that in that moment itself. The truth will reveal in its own glory. And this is this much can be said, the last teaching of the Upanishad. So, you know, it boils down the entire teaching of Kata Upanishad is ending here with this instruction that learn how to detach, learn how to cut your ties and knots with the temporary thing, which is changeful thing. And then, if you can cut everything off, spontaneously the truth will reveal, or we do dual journey, hmm. dual steps we take in Vedanta. One step we say, ah, this mortal thing is not me, and second step is, I am that. So if it is mortal, why I shall get attached to it? It cannot give me permanent joy which is momentary thing, cannot give me permanent joy, why shall I get attached to it? So, let me attach to that which is always with me, which is my in my birth, in my death, in my youth, in my old age, in my suffering, in my pain, when everyone leaves me, he stands behind me all the time. That's why uh, Chiro Shakha, Rabindranath Tagore has termed it, Chiro Shakha, my eternal friend. He never leaves you. Everyone can leave. Eternal friend. The whole world can renounce you, denounce you. 
But that is the eternal friend who never leaves us. And that's why Upanishad said, Kahiva Nyat, Kahiva Pranyat, Yadi Esho Akasho Ananda Nashat. If there is not Ananda, that divine entity which is called as Satchida Ananda, if that is not there, Kahiva Nyat, who would have lived with Anna, with the food? Kahiva Pranyat, who could have breath, a moment's breathing? Impossible. So that is because of that it is happening. So, that again it says Brahma Samasnute. They attain to the state of Brahmanu. And, and then <coughs> we read this 16 verse <coughs> also, <coughs> where it says <coughs> that there are 101 veins or nerve centers connected to the human heart. You know, now medical science doctors say how many nerve centers are here from the heart. It goes to brain and all this. How many? Eh? Countless. Okay. <laughs> but in ancient sages said 101. Okay. That's okay. 101 is a big number. So he says that when connected with the human heart, there are 101 such uh, nerve centers. And one of them passes to the crown here. Eh? And when the self of an individual goes along this vein at the point of death, then the individual attains immortality. How can you see one is attaining immortality? The subjectively, that person who is leaving the body due to long, arduous task of meditation and prayer and doing all this analysis every day, and detaching, detaching, detaching from the name and form and attaching and attaching, attaching to that eternal self. When the body dies, there life breath flows through the, from the heart which reaches the crown of the head. And if however he goes out through other veins, if he goes through here, he is free, never to be born. It's called the seventh chakra, no? Seventh plane. It, it penetrates to that and goes up. That soul need have no reason of coming back anywhere. But if it goes to other levels, then he is reborn and is rebirth maybe in a human or in subhuman form, depending on his karma, his thinking, his association, his attachment, his or her, that is the point. Now, now what to do? This is the last but one verse, 17 verse on page 181. <coughs> Let us chant together, but I will chant one first and then you all chant. Angushtamatraha Purusho antaratma, Purusho antaratma, Sada yananam, Sada yananam, Hidae shanni vishta, Hidae shanni vishta, Tang shat sharirat, Tang shat sharirat, Prabrihet. Pabrihet Munjadi Ivo Munjadi Ivo Ishikang Ishikang Dairi Yena Dairi Yena Tangbidat Tangbidyat Shukram Omritam Tangbidyat Tangbidyat Shukram, Shukram. Amritam Iti. Let us uh, read the last two lines again. Tang Shat Sarirat, Tang Shat Sarirat, Prabrihet, Prabrihet, Munjadi Eva, Munjadi Eva, Ishikam Dair Jena, Ishikam Dair Jena. Tangvidyat, Tangvidyat, Shukram, 
अमृतम तन्विद्यात शुक्रम अमृतमिति बस इट इज द साधना स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट भर्स द उपनिषद इज कंक्लूडिंग विद दिस वंडरफुल भर्स अंगुष्ठ मात्र द हार्ट इज इन द शेप ऑफ ए थम इज इट सो नो Well, anyhow, when Saint says this, uh, like this, mm. yeah, fist. So, angusta matra antaratma purusha. The inmost being is there in the shape of thumb. And anyhow, it's just not big. That's the point. It's not a very big, huge thing there, no. And in that is all the experiences of the world happening. <laughs> अंगुष्ट मात्र पुरुष द कॉन्शियसनेस दैट इटर्नल डिवाइन सेल्फ एज इट इज सीटेड हियर हाउ कैन ए ब्रह्मन इज सीटिंग एवरीवेयर एंड यू आर सीटिंग इज ऑनली हियर येस ही इज एवरीवेयर बट ही इज पैलपेबली फेल्ट हियर रामकृष्ण गेव द एग्जाम्पल दैट यू कैन फाइंड द गवर्नर एनीवेयर ऑफ द state but if you want to see him then you make an appointment and go to his governor house so this is the governor house hmm? <laughs> so angushta matra purusha antaratma he is the inmost atman this is the dehatma uh, physical body deho prana body vital energy that is another body five bodies we have in that sense deha prana mana buddhi aham huh? or you can say gross subtle causal whatever division you want to do so it is antaha antaha means more inward so you go deeper into your own self you find there is this atman so angushta matra the inmost being which of the size of a thumb सदा जना हृदय सन्निविष्ट ही इज सीटेड हियर सदा मीन्स ऑल द टाइम यना मीन्स दि ऑल क्रिएटेड बींग हियर ह्यूमेन बींग पर्टिकुलरली हृदय सन्निविष्ट सन्निविष्ट मीन्स इज सीटिंग देयर एस्टैब्लिश स्ट्रॉग एस्टैब्लिश देयर स्ट्रॉग दैट मीन्स ऑल द टाइम इज एक्जिस्टिंग देयर ऑल द टाइम so hidaye sannivishto and now what to do now tam that who is inside swat sharira from your own sharira this body prabrihet you have to separate out separate out like munjadi eva like munjatrina the grass you know the grass if you take the grass when you walk over you take a pull out on grass and you see there are so many uh, what is offshoots shoots here and there and if you want to go to the central pit which is very soft and subtle you have to take out very softly the outer uh, what is called the uh, protrusions no what do you call it a sheet a sheet yeah and those are the sheets so take out the outer sheets and one by one one by one and then the central pit you can find it but you have to do it dhairyena you cannot take one and pull like that then you will see that everything is broken it needs patience it needs perseverance it says it needs very dedicated effort to do that unfolding and dhairjena and tam vidwat tam you know tam means that truth vidyat means you know experience that amritam shukram shukram is pure shukram means stainless that stainless pure atman it is avidyat shukram amritam that is the amrita nectar like thing 
is a great philosophy is being given in all the lectures you hear on vedanta mostly by all vedanta teachers they talk about two things this unfolding the truth by taking out the five sheets this one idea as if the atman is inside then again we go back vedanta is very simple but we forget that you see this is the cell we have given you copies probably you have it or gone ha huh? see this that is the self it is inside as if it is covered by five circles one circle body is the physical body see i look like this you look like that is the physical gone then what your energy body is inside it is everywhere in your whole body it's called prana that is called the anna maya which is made up of anna this body is made up food all the food we take physical food that creates the flesh and bone and blood and all this so that is called anna maya it is made up anna and then body will be functioning how we say oh he is becoming weak his prana energy level is down old people say i am feeling nothing but i am very i feel less energy isn't that the old people did you hear old people talking <laughs> young people say full of it is bubbling energy huh? and old people will say i have no other problem but i feel very lacking of energy what is that energy hindu psychology in the philosophers that said it is a your energy body which permeates in your whole fresh body that's the energy body if it is down in your eyes you lose your eyesight becoming dim dim it lose here you don't hear then what do you do you put another in, uh, instrument to hear no then it just become weak the energy body which supplies energy to all our organs if that is reduced in any particular area then we feel that it is non functional it is becoming non functional so similarly that is the prana body we think i am this body here is the mistake this body is not me it is what i yet that's why we say oh i am putting weight ha huh? you are putting weight why are you putting weight in the body or so oh, i am i lost 20 pounds what did you lose 20 pounds i lost 20 pounds how do you lose 20 pounds and where did you lose it you gathered from the food you ate and you stopped eating and doing some exercise and reducing that so it is a, you can very clearly understand it is food is making your body heavy or light So this is not anna maya. It's made up anna. If you don't eat, you see how loose quickly you will lose your all weight. No. Excepting if you are a yogi, you can live for hundreds of years, like Pawari Baba, huh? Pavana Hari. You can have some. Here is your food, Pavana Hari. If you are not that yogi, then you lose weight, and ultimately many people die taking a resolution. I won't take as a protest. I will die without food unless this government accepts this principle or whatever. No, that means it is unknown. Unknown, you are thinking me. It is not you. It is the external gross things you intake, and that you say I am this. You are not that. Then you go little bit a calorie. How much calorie you have taken today? Huh? We are all analyzing calorie. Not the quantity. What about quantity? But calorie. How much calorie? One cookie. How much calorie? <laughs> And this much of a spinach or or whole salad. How much calorie? This much salad. And versus one very heavy dose cookie. <laughs> so what is wrong? It is too tiny. But your calorie is so much there. And this calorie, this much is no calorie. 
So it is calorie, it is the energy. That is my another entity. And now your mind you all know. Physical body is nothing. Physical you are very strong. But if mind goes wrong, they let, take us to the psychiatrist and then put to the psychiatric hospital. See the problem? Physically I am okay. My mind is thinking something else. So this is also the mental body. Then your intellectual body. Intellectual body. Yes, many people live in intellect more. The writers, scientists, uh, or philosophers, they live in that another realm. This is also one identity. So if you can rip up your identity one by one, one by one, then ultimately you will know what is Vidya, Shukram, Amrita. Then you unfold all these things. Suppose you take the outer coating, outer coating, outer, and all the covering circles are gone. What will remain? The inner circle. Self. That is, we are saying it is inner circle, but it is all everywhere. But they have given the idea, first you search him in the governor house, in the heart. That's why we all meditate in the heart. And that is the prescribed formula for normal spiritual seekers. Now, other gurus may teach you to meditate here, to meditate here. That's a different thing that is not prescribed here. They said for all of us in general should meditate in the heart. And there we have to analyze it and get out of all the outer coverings to deep up one by one, one by one. Then the central light which is there, it will be revealing in its own glory. And then you will see, I am the body, it is gone. I was thinking I am the energy, that energy is gone. I was thinking I am mentally upset or happy, unhappy, mind is gone. I was thinking, oh I am an intellectual being, I understand this, I understand that. That is also gone. And then now lastly, I, the pity I is gone. Then what will remain? That which is here, and without any barrier, you see that that permeates everywhere. Here and there and there and there, everywhere. And that is called Tang Vidvat Shukram. Then you know that is the Shukra, Shubra, bright, self luminous, full of joy and bliss. Shukram Amritam, that is the immortal. That is the birthless, deathless reality, immortal, Shukram Amritam. That is called Shukram, that is called Amritam, iti iti. Two times he said that Upanishad does not repeat things normally to emphasize that that is the truth, that is the truth. The sages are declaring that is the Atman, that is the nectar-like thing, that is the pure self. See, this is the practice. Vedanta practice is this practice. If you are a student of Vedanta, what to, what to be practiced every day? This is the practice. Shankaracharya has taught us that same verse we repeat every time. Mano buddhi ahankara chittani naham so I am not mano, not mano buddhi, I am not buddhi, not chitta, not my memory in the mind function, eh? ahankara naham. I am not made of flesh and bone, I am not this earth element, air element, navak, bhak, prana, nachu, pasta, payu, I am not these organs, I am that. That means rip up, rip up, rip up all your false identity and then what will remain, that will remain, shine in its own glory and that moment is the moment revelation comes. That is called the realized soul experiences that infinite divine self all around itself and that's called the freedom, that's called the freedom from the shackles of all misunderstandings. So spiritual life is taking out of our all misunderstandings. Don't put any impression of who you are. You are a man, you are a woman, you are educated, you are old, you are young, uh, you are 
you are powerful, you are weak. These are all concerning the body. You are talking about your mind and emotions. Get out of all this littleness. And then what will remain? That will be shining forth. Eh? This is the very beautiful inspiration. The cream of Vedanta for everyday practice is this practice. Vedanta is Vedantic meditation. Is this meditation? You sit and analyze. I am the Atman. How I am the Atman? I am not the body. Start with the body. Start with the senses. Sarvendriyani jaranti tejaha. All these senses are getting jara. Jaranti. Its strength gets down. It becomes weaker. And that Atman. Get out, get out, get out. What are you not? And that takes long time. And our other positive way, I am the light inside, in my heart. There is a light, effulgent light. And that is all shining all the time. And that shining light is that now, in the waking state, that shining light is like a projection lamp inside, showing the dream. And that shining light is when body, mind, everything is sleeping. Then also it is shining. It says, I slept well. That consciousness is telling me, I slept well. Huh? So, and then give out, get out of this. In Samadhi it happens. Then what is called the Jivan Mukta. You are liberated when you are in free. Free while you are living. You remember that story. <coughs> Swami Shuddhananda. Swami Shuddhananda Swami was Vivekananda Swami's disciple. And he was, he, it is said that he understood Vivekananda, his moods and his teachings more intimately. So he was more absorbed in Swami Vivekananda's thoughts and ideas. So there is a great scholar in Calcutta University uh, that, wow, what is his name? He was giving a talk. What is the name? What is the yeah. name of the? Huh? No. Uh, great scholar of that time giving a talk in the Albert Hall of the Calcutta University where many scholars have appeared and he's a scholarly person and he's giving a talk, talk and hearing that so, Latu Maharaj, Adhuta Ananda, he was excited. And Sudhir Maharaj, Samish Shuddha Ananda, who was the general secretary afterwards and became the president also of the order, he was very interested in scriptures and studies with his pundits and uh, because he is a Sashodhar Tarkachuramani. Yeah, the name of the pundit is. Shashodhar. Shashodhar Takkuchuramani is famous all over India. He is giving a great speech in the Albert Hall in Calcutta University. And then, so naturally, Suddhananda Swami planned to attend to that meeting. And this Latu Maharaj is hanging on him. Hey, Suddhananda, you are going. Please take me. And he is Ramakrishna's disciple. He is requesting that younger sadhu to go with him. I will go. You are going. I will go with you. He was not interested because he said they will speak in Sanskrit, the entire talk will be in Sanskrit uh, or in English. You know? And this Latu Maharaj does not know even Bengali. Half Bengali, half Hindi is the way he speaks. Uh, so it is a mixed. What he will do? But he is saying, Swami, you need not have to go. But he said, no, I'll go, I'll go. So, okay. <laughs> so he came and the hall was full with the scholarly people, top dignitaries of Calcutta at that time. And now Suddhananda Swami also entered with Latu Maharaj. <laughs> and Latu Maharaj entered and they sat. And the Pandit, the scholar, suddenly in his speech, he came to this verse. This verse, particularly what we are reading today. Angusta Matra Purushantaratma 
सदा जनानाम हृदय सन्निविष्ट तं सत्सत् शरीरात् पब्रिहेत् मुन्यादी वो ईशिकां धैर्येना तं विद्वात् शुक्रमं मृतम् एंड ही ट्राइड टू एक्सप्लेन एंड एस सून ही स्टार्टेड स्टार्टेड एक्सप्लेन एंड दिस लाटू मारास ही जंप्ड आउट ऑफ हिस सीट हा 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 दिस रास्कल पंडित हैज टोल्ड द राइट थिंग and everyone attention goes to that rustic looking that Swami uh, Adhuta Ananda. Huh? He does not look good because he is a rustic, ordinary uh, village person as it were. And as Ramakrishna, he has no protocol. Uh, he will go bare body and dance and sing what he will do, God knows. So <laughs> this guy uh, in the middle of the Soma scholar and he jumped out and and Suddhananda Swami pulling him, hey, hey, please, please stop, stop. I didn't know you don't understand you, boy. And this rascal Pandit <laughs> just told the right thing. <laughs> because he's matched with his experience. And then Suddhananda felt so much embarrassed. <laughs> he came out and pulled him out of the hall and went back to Belur Mott. But what was his intention? What he has experienced in the heart? That if all himself, if you can rip up all these other uh, coverings of your divine self, then you will be there. And that resonated in his heart when he uttered the mantra. He does not know Sanskrit, he does not know English. But when he uttered and tried to explain, and he jumped out, out of joy. And he came back to monastery, Balurman. And those days our monastery was poor. So he being the Ramakrishna's disciple, he had a bed in the cot. Hmm? And Suddhananda was lying in the floor with the mat. And after every 10 15 minutes, hey Sudhir! Suddhananda, hey Sudhir! Are you, are you falling asleep? You know the rascal Pandit has told the right thing. <laughs> and he, every 10 minutes he is repeating the same word and ecstatic joy as it were. He got what he have experienced and this Upanishad is saying the same thing. So this is the point. And he, the whole night went on like that. And the Suddhananda Swami said, I won't take you anywhere. <laughs> See, I could not enjoy the last part of the talk. For you I have to come out. So I am not going to take you anywhere. Well, you fool don't understand what the Pandit says, right, he has said. Ah, this is the experience. So, point what I want to say, this is not a book reading, but it is the experience of the sage who wrote this Kata Upanishad, who, to whom the truth was revealed, and that is handed down from teacher to student to student to student, and we are getting it. Ah, so, this is the revelation and this is the practice. If we forget all the Upanishad, Kata Upanishad, remember one verse, we can remember, then we can say at least, if any time anyone asks, what did you learn of Kata Upanishad? <laughs> what shall he say? We can say this verse. Yeah. In the heart, there are this, all the time the Lord is seated in the heart. It's Sannivishta, Sammak Nivishta means most intimately he is here sitting and from your own body this all the five external coverings if you rip up one by one one by one one by one like the grass kusho grass not kusho grass the normal grass huh? you can take out the outer coatings of it and you can find the central pith which is very soft and subtle. Similarly, that soft and subtle, the most intimate, most joyful, most peaceful, that reality which is within, you can feel that, you can experience that, you can enjoy that. So that is the grand advice of the scripture. There lies in everyone's heart I am reading the running translation by Swami Lokeshwaranandaji. There lies in everyone's heart the inmost self, the capital S, yes, which 
which is the size of a thumb, just as a tender munja stalk, munja trina, it is the, the grass, is taken out of its sheath with great care. So also a person seeking liberation should, with the help of discrimination, learn to separate the capital self from the body and also learn to regard the self thus separated as the pure and immortal cosmic self. And then that is the end of the spiritual journey. So this verse says that there is one common self everywhere and in every being. As this capital self is everything, that's why it is called the Purusha. This self capital lies hidden in the heart of every being. It is hidden by the body, the organs, and their collective activities. Collective activities, body and the senses and its collective activities. Our day is nothing but collective activity of our body and the senses and the mind. Here is, it is compared to the tender stalk within the munja grass, which is hidden by its sheets. In order to take the stalk out of the grass, you have to separate it from sheath with great care. Similarly, you have to separate the capital self, which is real self, from the body and the organ. You cannot just cut. You cannot take a um, cutting tool and cut your hand and feet and eyes, then you see the self. No, it is not like that. It should be done by your very sharp mind sharp understanding, clear mind. The body and the organs are all superimposed on that capital self. They are dependent on the self. Everything is dependent on the self, the light inside. For without the self, they are all dead. The self animates them and therefore they work. The hand, feet, eyes, they are all animated by whom? The energy comes from inside, no? You see the robot working. Robot, how it is working? The energy supply is somewhere else. So it is that he is the energy of energy. In fact, this self capital is the sole authority under whose command everything in the world moves and acts. That's why you say God, God has created. It is God's will. The whole world is all controlled by the divine, the Lord. No. The self is the most inmost being of everything. That is why it is not seen by the physical eyes. As you remove the sheath of munja grass to get to the stalk, so also you reject the apparent self, the small. Apparent self is capital, the small. Look at that book. Uh, these are the distinctions. Now modern English is becoming modern. But they say, make everything small, not big. But in spiritual text, it does not work like that. If you make it, you will not understand anything. What is the capital self or divine self, small self, this self, which I am talking, eating and expressing. No? So that's why here is given small s. So these are very important point to note. Saying, not this, not this. You have to exercise your power of an discrimination analysis to the utmost to get the real, the self capital. Only then do you discover the self and realize that this self, pure and immortal, is the common self of all. It is all also your own self. In other words, you are one with all when you realize this. Got it? Ah, so we end today then, eh? <clears throat> I quickly read what Chinmayananda Sami has explained, the same thing. He said, the Purusha, that consciousness, P capital, at the size of a thumb, the inner self, capital, is ever seated in the heart of all living beings. One should draw him out from one's own body with steadiness as one draws the pith, the central stalk, from a reed, the rusk, rush grass. Know him as pure, the capital P, and immortal. Yes, know him 
as the pure, the immortal. We have already, this is analysis, this is the commentary, commentary of Chinmayananda, he says, we have already discussed in the earlier mantras the concept of the supreme reality as a mere presence in the shape of one's own thumb, residing in the center of one's heart. We noted there that the size and shape have been given to the cell capital to facilitate our meditation. Why you are saying in the heart, thumb, because we have to fix our mind in some particular point and to focus there and then concentrate and forget everything. So for the purpose of meditation, though self is everywhere, here the Upanishad has asked you to meditate in the heart. We noted that the size of the shape have been given to the self capital to facilitate our meditation during the earlier stage of path of dhyana. We are starting point of our spiritual practice, so it is for us to start. In fact, the Atman, the capital, is formless, although here self capital is described as having a shape and form. This is only for the purpose of providing the seekers with a prop for their mind and meditation to concentrate upon. You like a, it is a staircase. It is helping you to go step by step to reach the roof. It is quite appropriate that Lord of Death should conclude his Upanishadic declaration to his disciple Nachiketa with a direct call upon him to continue his meditations and discrimination. The real divine presence, R D capital, in the center of the center, from the unreal concentric coating for matter. Unreal concentric coating of matter. This is made of matter. Rice dal. Hmm? Ice cream. All this give this physical. The concentric realities. And then go deeper. And which the spirit has seemingly put on to play its game and hide and seek. Beyond the five koshas the seat lies the spirit. The analogy employed here to show up how through discrimination one reaches the final state of the self capital is true to the style of the Upanishad. Most empathic and voluminously self-expressive. Nochiketa and through Nochiketa's entire world of seekers like us, they are advised to extricate extricate the element of absolute consciousness, the pure conscious essence, from the delusionary consciousness of the body by continuous and deep practice of discrimination and meditation. That during meditation one should not in the least strain oneself is so vividly brought out by the analogy of drawing out of the pith from the kernel. The reed itself is the most delicate of the plants and the stalk is more so. And to draw out this flimsy and subtle pith from its outer envelopments constituted the stalks of the leaves themselves is a delicate act which needs a softness of touch, a measured and practiced application of force and subtle silky deftness in handling the entire process. That is this meditation is a very pure mind is necessary. First of all, you have to concentrate what I am not. It is only discernment, very deep analytical mind can grab this. Otherwise it will not make any sense in our life. I am not the body, not the mind, not the... How many times we told? What impression it brought in our life? But a person who has really, a delicate person, analyzed deeply, like Latu Maharaj, the Adhutananda, will jump out. The whole night he could not sleep, listening this mantra only. And what reaction we are having now? We read two, three times the same mantra. We are jumping in joy. Will our sleep go away? Tonight sleep, will, shall we lose our sleep tonight? Oh, what a, what a message we have got it today. That means it is a sharp 
intellect is necessary, long practice is necessary, very subtle, it is very soft and subtle, fine and finer and finer. It is not the gross thing that you can grab it like that. That's why we cannot do that. That's why our gurus give us a concrete form. You don't want to think of Christ, think of Rama, think of Krishna, think of Mahakali, think of Madhurga, a concrete something. And then you go, there also you forget your body. When you really concentrate deeply in your thought of your chosen idea, then what happens? Your mind gets totally stuck there. So you forget everything. So same thing is happening. But that of knowledge is analytical mind with a very sharp and delicate mind, pure mind, this analysis is to be done. So it is said pure consciousness that is the controller and director of all physical, mental, intellectual activities in a human being is the soul of the Atman. The Upanishad concludes with the repeated assertion that we must know him to be pure and immortal. He is pure in the sense of impurities of the mind. Why do you say he is pure? If he is everywhere, then why do you say it is pure, it is impure? No, 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 so long your mind is there, pure and impure is there. When your mind goes away, what is the question of your pure and impure? You are pure or impure in your deep sleep. Do you feel you are pure or impure? That question does not come. In your waking state, you can say, Oh, I didn't get a shower. I don't feel like very fresh. Huh? You can feel like that. But in your deep sleep, what is pure or impure? What is good or bad? What is holiness, unholiness? There is nothing as such. So, he is pure in the sense of impurity of the mind. As karma, the desires, the krodha, anger, the lobha, avarice, etc., are not in him, the real. He is immortal inasmuch as he is eternal, unborn, truth, all pervading, and uncaused cause of all effects seen in his manifestation. So, this is all. Now, as I last verse, so I read it quickly because that is nothing to explain. Plus, please remember this verse as our regular practice. Yes? Um, our, cons our consciousness, doesn't it control our dreams? Yeah, consciousness is behind the dream. That's why we see a dream. If the consciousness is not there, what light is there in our dream? How can we recognize them? So I recognize you now because there is a consciousness. In the dream also I recognize so many things. So what is the consciousness which is allowing me to recognize them? So then we identify everything because we think this is the only reality and we get mind gets stuck here. If the mind turns that way, it is turning this way, it is turning that way. And we can turn this way, as I say, selfie. <coughs> you take your selfie camera <laughs> this way, then you see the self. And this is when this way, then you do all. Now, last verse, let us stand together. Mrittu proktang, mrittu proktang, nochiketo, nochiketo, atha labdha, atha labdha. Vidyam etam, Vidyam etam, Yoga vidincha, Yoga vidincha, Krishnam, Krishnam, Brahma prapto, Brahma prapto, Virajo, Virajo, Abhut bimitu, Abhut bimitu, Anno opievam, Anyo opi evam jo vidadhyatma viva jo vidadhyatma viva iti kathako parishadi diti ardhai sastavalli This is the end of this chapter in the second. So what does it mean? Means nachiketa das, das nachiketa received from death the knowledge of Brahman that Brahman is his own self and the self of all. As well as the knowledge of yoga, 
that means including the rules and the practices. Hmm? How to practice? In a nutshell, this Nachiketa's guru, who is called the Yama, who is the master, who knows what is this side, what is that side, what is in life, what is after life. So that guru taught Nachiketa about Brahman as well as the knowledge of yoga and also how to unite with that reality by discarding the body-mind identities of the five coverings of ourself. This has been. This helped him. Him means Nachiketa. This helped Nachiketa to attain union with Brahman. This knowledge, he is a right student. He learned from his guru. He practiced it with a pure heart. And then he became pure and immortal. Anyone else who attains such knowledge becomes the same. That means, is it Nachiketa did it? It is not only Nachiketa. Anyone in the world, the Upanishad declares, follows this path of analysis and concentration on the truth will attain the same knowledge. So, only one page. The Upanishad gives here an eulogy of the knowledge of Brahman, which is also the knowledge of the self, and also states the benefit of such knowledge. You become free, pure and immortal. You realize that your self, small self, your small self is the cosmic self, C-S capital, and that you are one with everything, from Brahman down to the tiniest blade of grass. That means, here comes the Vedanta, what Vedanta teaches. Sarvang Khalidang Brahma. Everything in this world is nothing but Brahman. You realize the oneness of the thing, as there is none else but you. You are free from fear. Fear comes from another. If you know that only one is there, and you are that one, then whom you will fear? Free from desires. You are then really free, you are pure, you are also immortal. Nachiketa attained this state, and anyone who follows in his footsteps can also attain it. Here ends the third chapter of the second part of the Kathopanishad. Okay? And then I will also read what Chinmayananda Swami concludes. He says here that. If Nochiketa, having been so instructed by the Lord of Death in this knowledge and in the whole process of yoga, becomes free from all impurities and death and attained Brahman, and so will attain any other too who knows thus the inner self. The previous stanza, with its repetition in this last line, the practice of iti, iti means last, had already given us indication that the Upanishad had ended. This mantra can, therefore, be only interpreted as words of the Upanishad, Sruti, Bhagavati itself. Nachiketa, after listening to the entire Upanishadic advices of the Master and having acquired a, a thorough knowledge of the technique of Yoga Vidhi, of self-preparation, by which he can come to experience the absolute perfection as his own real nature, retired to a quiet retreat where he practicing Brahma Vidya came to the pure in mind and intellect and through the process of higher meditation realized his self. If one seeker at the period of the Vedic era had realized the self in him through the blessings of such a super divine master to many of us it may be seen to be a historical accident and not sure achievement for all seekers at all times. To checkmate this possible doubt in the readers, the Upanishad here emphatically asserts, so will he too attain who knows thus the inner self. Even today, he who can fulfill in himself all the necessary qualifications explained so vividly in the Upanishad and then practice the entire technique of Brahma Vidya diligently as Nochiketa did. He or she can too can realize the self and become one with the truth, a God-man upon the earth. Okay?
So, Om Shahana Bhavatu Shahano Gunatu Shahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Navid Visha Bahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Panam Astu So now uh, tomorrow will be gospel class but it will be given by Sami Atma Tattananda and uh, I'll be in, uh, not here for two, three weeks, three weeks and that time Swami Mahajogananda is giving the class and you can have some book, next book we'll read. <coughs> Give me a book. Bring the whole bundle here. <laughs> but I have I am kept it with you. One person should take the responsibility to collect the money. <laughs> this is the book we'll read next time. Uh, it is uh, the it is called Yoga Vasista. Advice of Vasista to Sri Ramachandra. And it is it is a huge book. Some thirty three thousand or some verses are there. But this is the abridged and abridged and abridged mm. nutshell. The whole philosophy of Yoga Vasishta is given here. And this is a Bengali book translated by one of our great Vedanta Swami. He is called Dhireshananda. The Swami has passed away. I had the opportunity to meet him. And I read it a few times maybe. But it says, if you read three times, you will get Brahma again. But I didn't get it. <laughs> because I'm not a fit candidate. <laughs> but anyhow, that means it contains such spiritual depth. And that Swami spent time in Bengali. He kept the original verses and then translated and gave some notes and things. And it was sitting in Bengal, in Bengali language. So I thought it is very enjoyable book. So uh, everyone will like probably this book. So I tried to translate it. Uh, it is, I think I have not heard that anyone has translated before this book at least. Jogobashish too will be 100 versions. One may be big, one may be small, so one may be 100 verses. But this is the concise verse. And this name has been given, Nectar of Supreme Knowledge. And I, don't give any credit to me, rather discredit, because translation may not be up to the mark. But I tried whatever my knowledge, my small buddhi. So if we'll start this class next time. When I come back, on the July 3rd will be my starting class. So this book, you can purchase from the bookstore. But Paroma said that better to bring it here so that everyone can collect one book from here. Uh, because otherwise you have to come at 10 o'clock or wait for the bookstore to open and then if you like you can do that. But you can, one should take care of the books and note down and how much money today who bought, who bought this book, how much you paid? I didn't buy the book. Oh. <laughs> so, Oh, you bought from Amazon. So I do not know how much is the price. Yeah, then. Didn't you buy it today? It was $16.95 plus tax. Plus tax. That's $16 plus tax. How much is it? Just actually. $17? $16, 17, $17. I would say give $20. Little so donation yeah, to the... Donation, <laughs> donation to yeah, the... Makes yeah. That makes yeah, it yeah. easy. Huh? Yeah. You, you can give $20 and who will take charge of it? Paroma, please take care. <laughs> then you read, take the book, and you can collect one today itself, and she will be the cashier. <laughs> okay, thank you all.
Except they put your eyes back. Okay, I got it. I have a new